Over the last half century or so, humans have put a lot of stuff into orbit, from communication satellites, to space telescopes, to weather monitoring equipment, and even spacecraft that sail using light. But what you probably didn't know is that a lot of them broadcast all of the data they're collecting back down to Earth, and anyone listening can receive it. A little over a year ago, I put together this antenna and radio setup and aimed it at a particular spot in the sky. On the other end was one of NASA's latest weather satellites, GOES-16, equipped with some of the latest and finest in monitoring equipment and cameras. We'd used a special program to detect when the antenna was pointed at the satellite, and then a second program to decode the stream of information. Within a few minutes, it spit out high-resolution images of the Earth in a variety of wavelengths, taken essentially in real time. There's nothing illegal about doing this, and NASA not only encourages it, but the satellite was built exactly for this purpose. People anywhere with line of sight to the satellite can get the data directly from it and use it to see what weather to expect, even if the internet or other communication services go down. The resolution is remarkable, and even though we got a dozen different channels with different images and info, what we got was only a fraction of what the satellite actually collects. It puts out two distinct signals. A stronger but less info-dense one with the most important information, and a weaker and wider one with all of the data. We're still working on building a setup to receive that second signal, as it requires an entire separate build, computer, and radio setup to do. But, in the meantime, today I want to show you how you can get the data for free at home without needing a 3 meter wide satellite dish. For those interested, I've linked to the first video in the description and in the top right hand corner of your screen. But today, all we're going to need is an internet connection. You see, an overwhelming majority of the data the satellite beams out is available in almost real time on a variety of websites. I want to show you some of my favorites because having access to real-time Earth and space data is pretty cool and the things you can find in the data are pretty amazing. Let's start with one of the instruments that isn't aimed at the Earth, called the SUV or Solar Ultraviolet Imager. It can see the sun in six different wavelengths in the UV to far UV regions. The satellite takes the images in all these wavelengths and then beams them back down to Earth. All of the images are available in real time on NASA's Solar Dynamics website and I've linked to it in the description. For some of the data, it gives you 48 hour long time lapses of the sun, which are amazing as you can really see the sun rotating. And if there's ever a coronal mass ejection or other similar burst, you can see those as well. The time lapse updates basically every 12 hours, but if you want an image of the sun, fresh images taken only moments prior are posted every few minutes. Last week, on November 11th, a rare astronomical event was going to take place, and while most people were outside looking mostly at clouds, I was on this site checking every few hours. And sure enough, my patience paid off. Did you see it? It was Mercury! That was the transit of Mercury as seen from space. Here it is in a couple other wavelengths. Each of these different wavelengths of UV light was chosen when they built the satellite to highlight different aspects of solar physics. Some highlight stuff going on on the surface of the sun, or in the corona, or let you peer deeper into the inner layers of the sun. Personally, I love the 48 hour time lapses, and they're all free for anyone to download. If you were so inclined, you could save a month's worth of data and stitch together a time lapse of the sun to see it do a whole rotation. Now, while the sun is pretty awesome, really the main point of the satellite is to watch the Earth and monitor storms and other weather phenomena. So most of its instruments are Earth-focused. The main camera takes images that are 21,000 pixels square at full resolution. So you can zoom in pretty tight before things get fuzzy. You may or may not have noticed, but if you've been watching the weather forecast on the news lately, the images of the Earth that they show have gotten a lot better over the years. And it's because of this satellite and other new generation satellites like it. It's why around storm season you get super high resolution images of incoming hurricanes as they head towards the east coast. The satellite takes black and white images, but it does this at a variety of specific wavelengths all throughout the visible and infrared spectrum. Basically, it has a sort of filter wheel that moves in front of the camera so that when it takes a picture, all it sees is the light that makes it through that filter. By setting each black and white image to be a particular color and then combining them, you can end up with composite images that bring out a lot of extra detail and produce what's called a hyperspectral image. Like the solar images, the rest of the data the satellite collects is also available in real time online, as well as decades worth of archived imagery. In this case, there's two collections I want to highlight. The first is called Satellite Data Services, and it's over a petabyte of satellite data of all formats. And not just from GOES-16 either, it's a diverse collection stretching back to the 1970s from a variety of satellites, both American and international. The site lets you browse through and even scrape all of the data so that you can explore it or use it to train your weather prediction software, or whatever else you feel like doing with it. Though be warned, it is a bit slow. 
The second tool is hosted by Colorado State University and is more focused on imagery from the past few weeks. It automatically generates time lapses of the images as well as colorizes them and combines them for that hyperspectral functionality I mentioned earlier. I've put links to both sites below, but we're mostly going to be talking about the second one. In the second tool, you also get access to data from multiple satellites, not just GOES-16, so this still works for people who aren't on the American side of the planet. GOES-16 is one of about half a dozen weather satellites in a ring around the Earth in geostationary orbit. The different countries that own and built the various satellites all cooperate to share the data between them, so everybody gets a real-time view of the entire planet in a dozen or more wavelengths. This tool lets you switch between them easily and pick the exact thing that you want to look at. There's also data from a satellite that orbits more traditionally in a lower orbit so that you get data from the poles, which are hard to see clearly from the other satellite's perspective. It just updates in strips as it orbits around the planet, so it looks a little bit choppy. Also, some of the satellites had some extra bells and whistles added when they were built, so have extra channels that do different things. A really cool one on GOES, for example, is the Lightning Mapper. It detects flashes of lightning in real time and then maps them out. It's crazy to see how many there are and how gigantic some storms can be. For the main imaging functionality, the tool either lets you look at specific wavelength channels or combine images, as I've mentioned. Some of the individual channels alone are pretty cool, and often those channels are also colorized to highlight detail. This one, for example, lets you see ozone concentration. There are several different channels that show different layers of clouds and airflow. And there's also a couple in the visible spectrum, and you can see the land below clearly. The snow and ice channel is really cool, because if your timing is perfect, you can see the plume of water vapor released when a rocket is launched, which should give you an idea of just how sensitive the satellite is. But my favorite are the combined images. For example, this channel is called GeoColor, and it mixes the visible light images and one of the infrared channels to give you something that looks like Earth as you'd imagine it if you were in space. It really is a stunning image, honestly, and it's cool to see the sun reflect off the water and land as it moves. During hurricane season, I like to use this to see where the hurricanes are and watch them move through sped up time. Another example of what hyperspectral imaging can do is this channel that highlights air mass as it flows around the planet, which is helpful for making predictions about the weather. This other one shows sulfur dioxide concentration, which is important for measuring pollution. And this one is the fire temperature channel. It's one of those does exactly what it says on the tin sort of things. It shows you fire. See all those little red dots? Those are all fires, some of which are many kilometers wide. This time-lapse imagery is from a couple days ago. Remember all the headlines about the Amazon being on fire? Yeah, this is what it looks like after the rains have come and started putting some of it out. It's hard to contextualize when you see the images in the news, it just looks like a lot of burning trees. But this is the reality. It's dozens and dozens of medium to large fires, almost entirely set by people looking to claim land for farming use, thanks to the loosening of conservation laws. At one point, the smoke was so bad that this is what Sao Paulo, one of the largest cities in Brazil, looked like at one in the afternoon some days. And you could clearly see all of it from space. So next time you see a headline about the fires, feel free to head to this website, and chances are you can see them clearly thanks to this satellite. And the data is free and available to the public 24-7 in basically real time. For another view that is a little closer to home for many of you, I just picked a random day from the past two weeks, zoomed in on California, and could spot a fire clearly. And sure enough, double-checking on Google, it was the South Fire, which has been burning for 74 days and burned about 5,000 acres, which should give you a bit of context to the scale of these images. And remember, all the data and imagery so far that I've been showing you has come from half a dozen satellites, but primarily GOES-16. There are dozens of other satellites in orbit, and much of what they collect is also free online, but hosted on different websites. One site I want to talk about quickly is called Zoom Earth. It doesn't update quite as quickly as the Colorado site, but instead is a database of about a dozen satellites, and it switches smoothly between datasets from different satellites as you zoom further in. They've got a great feature where you can explore the imagery that's available over time, so you can see how even 10 years can make a huge change in the landscape. Google Earth actually now offers a similar service based on data from a few different satellites, but primarily one called Landsat, which is a joint NASA-USGS project, and the longest-running survey of changes of the Earth's surface as seen from space. From all the images the satellite took, the program built a cloud-free image of the entire planet to represent every year since 1984. So you can watch huge chunks of the planet as it changes over the last 30 years or so. Here's the Columbia Glacier melting, for example. Another is the growth of mining activity in an area in Alberta, Canada. Here's the same area in Brazil where I just showed you the fires. As you can see, what was once pristine rainforest has all been slashed and burned and converted to farmland. And the same can be seen all throughout the country and all around the world. Here's the same in Bolivia, for example. 
what was thousands of acres of forest has all been converted to farmland. If you've got a spare minute, I'd highly recommend checking this site out and see how the world has changed even in just the past 20 years. As you saw in the title, this is a Team Trees video, so we were going to talk about trees at some point. Around the world, there's more fires burning in more places, and our forests are shrinking rapidly as they're replaced with farmland. And thanks to the many satellites in orbit and how the data is free for anyone to use, these days you can see most of it happen in real time with nothing but an internet connection. Ecosystems everywhere have been massively disrupted, and we've already lost about 80% of all species on Earth. Personally, I think it makes it feel more real when you can see it so casually like this, and directly see humans' effect on the planet from space. But let's talk Team Trees. In the face of all of that, Team Trees is this massive collaboration started by Mr. Beast and Mark Rober, with hundreds of YouTubers that are all coming together to raise $20 million to plant 20 million trees. Through the Arbor Day Foundation, the trees are being planted for a dollar a tree with the goal to plant 20 million trees before the end of 2020, and we need your help. Before you run to the comments, we know that this isn't going to magically undo all the damage that the fires and other deforesting activities have done. If, even if you were to plant all the trees in one location, it would fill an area about the size of the Greater Toronto Area, which is massive, but the world is a big place and there's limited space where you could put trees without starting to revert farmland back into forests. But really though, that's not the point. Team Trees isn't here to magically fix the world. Instead, it's a message to the world and our lawmakers that it's possible for people who may not all agree on everything, can come together to do something awesome and positive that alone we could never do. Climate change is a global problem, and everyone will be affected if they haven't already. It's at a scale that took all of humanity a hundred years to do this much damage, and it'll take just as much work to undo. As the saying goes, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. At the time of recording this, Team Trees is already at almost 16 million and is coming up on the goal, and lots of people have chipped in. Everyone from Elon Musk to PewDiePie. I'm going to be donating 500 trees, and I hope that if you haven't already, you'll consider joining me in supporting Team Trees. If you want to learn more about Team Trees, there's some links in the description. There have been some really amazing Team Tree videos already, so I'd highly recommend checking those out if you haven't and head over to teamtrees.org so we can end the decade off on a high note. If you're interested in learning more about getting data off of satellites, I've put some links to some previous videos in the description. As always, a huge thank you to my amazing patrons, channel members, and supporters on Ko-fi who make these videos possible. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe, and consider ringing the bell to turn on notifications to see when I post new videos. That's all for now, and I'll see you next time.